She was buried in the Black Hills National Cemetery. The South Dakota Highway Patrol closed several routes through the Black Hills today because of high water and runoff from flooding. The Highway Patrol also warned motorists in the hills to be on the lookout for landslides and falling rocks. Meantime, Governor Janklow said today he expects the impact on agriculture from the 1995 flooding to be huge. Janklow says time is running out for farmers to plant a crop, and the governor is preparing disaster declarations for at least 20 counties in South Dakota. The National Parent Teacher Association is celebrating this week as Teacher Appreciation Week. And tonight, Beth Fuller introduces us to a teacher who deserves quite a bit of appreciation, like she's been getting from several generations of students. She may not look it, but Lowell fifth grade teacher Marilyn Lee is celebrating 36 years of teaching. One of the nicest memories is when you see one of your students who has grown up and has become successful. And I have had some students in my class whose parents I had earlier, and that's been a really neat experience. Jim Stansberry is one of those parents. He has fond memories of his days in Miss Lee's classroom. I think that it's kind of neat that she's still uh, working and that that uh, she's teaching my son, you know, maybe the same way she taught me. Um, I've got two little girls at home that are, are, are twin girls that had already decided that they wanted Miss Lee too when they got to fifth grade. But Jim's son, Anthony, will be the last Stansbury to have Miss Lee. She plans to retire at the end of this year. Her time's come to retire because... She's had my dad, and that was a while ago. And she had a lot of other people's parents. So I guess she's probably doing the right thing. Although it may be the right thing for her, it's hard for her students to see her leave. It makes just everything fun. Social study, just all the regular subjects. Fun. When people are messing around and stuff, and she's just really in control. And so she has everything under control, and there's nothing really bad that happens or anything. So just going to be bad when she leaves. But even though this is her last year in the classroom, lessons learned from Miss Lee will be with these students for years to come. In Sioux Falls, Beth Fuller, News 5. Well, you might think that the child care profession is one that's been around forever, but actually it's 75 years old in America. Child care needs arose with the end of World War I when America suddenly found itself with hundreds of thousands of widowed mothers who had to go to work to support their children. One group that met the needs of those mothers is celebrating a 75th anniversary. Cammie Melton has the story. Sweet girl. When mom and dad can't be there, the strong, loving arms of a child care provider comes in a close second. Today, one of the oldest daycare centers in the United States is celebrating 75 years of caring. We're wonderful 75 years, and, and uh, we're uh, very happy about our rich history, and we look forward to, uh, uh, to another successful uh, 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 several decades uh, of service in front of us. What began as a means of helping widowed mothers go back to work after World War I has now become a necessity and one that Governor Bill Janklow says has made the country more productive and profitable. I used to work two jobs. I provided daycare in the afternoon and then I worked a full-time job in the morning. And it was really tough, but I was comfortable with it because I knew we had a good service going. But Volunteers of America is also using their birthday to honor those that are the best caregivers, mothers and fathers. The real, uh, the real heroes are parents who are with their children day after day um, with all those uh, uh, tough decisions that parents only can make. Over the last 75 years, the major challenges Change in the child care field has been the increased demand for this service, but the one constant, Barnett says, is a lack of funding. His birthday wish is that in the future they can celebrate the end of their financial difficulties. In Sioux Falls, Cami Milton, News 5. In a moment, a look back on the day that came 50 years after the day that the world started to relax. VE Day plus 50 next on News 5. Father Francis Sampson, an army chaplain who parachuted into Normandy, then into Holland, was wounded, captured, but managed to escape. In their bravery, and that of all their brothers and sisters in arms, America found the will to defeat the forces of fascism. And today, we, 
the sons and daughters of their sacrifice, say thank you and well done. I ask all the veterans of World War II now to stand and be recognized. Monsignor Sampson retired from the service 25 years ago and became a part of the Sioux Falls Catholic Diocese in 1977. 55 years ago today, the beginning of the end of World War II began as Germany surrendered on what became known as VE Day, or Victory in Europe. This afternoon, several men who were in uniform on VE Day gathered at the Sioux Falls Disabled American Veterans Club and recalled where they were at the time. They finally told me if when I got uh, back to the line, I, I escaped you know, to the line. That's and how I knew found out, but they give up then. Well, we were... We were over in the Pacific, and uh, we heard that there was, the war was over, but we didn't know anything about it because the Japanese were still going at us. There was good news in that. Yeah, it was really a joy. Why was it good news? Get this war over with. We all celebrated. We really celebrated our victory over there in Europe. Uh -huh. And I really says really persist on that. I really like that when I can get to say, hey, boys, we're uh, back and going back to America again where we belong. Well, I was liberated from prison camp in Germany. And, uh, in fact, I was liberated on the 29th of April, but we couldn't leave the camp because the facilities weren't there to transport us. But Fifty years ago today, we were flown from Landschlitz, Germany, to Le Havre, France, to Camp Lucky Strike, where we were greeted by the Red Cross and our troops and a big celebration. We got eggnog to drink and started on rehabilitation. VE Day, 50 years ago today, marked only the end of the war in Europe. It would be several more months before VJ Day, or victory over Japan, and the complete end to World War II. VE celebrations moved from Paris to Berlin today as former foes gathered in one location after the end of the war in Europe. German leaders welcomed members of the traveling summit as they arrived in Berlin. Vice President Al Gore represented the United States at today's commemorative event. German Chancellor Helmut Kohl stood with Allied leaders as the German national anthem was played in honor of all those who gave their lives during the war. Tomorrow, world leaders gather in Moscow for another VE Day ceremony. DNA school began today in the O.J. Simpson trial in Los Angeles. The jury today played the role of students. For these jurors, this course is not an elective. It's a mandatory class. John Gibson has the story. It's like Mr. Wizard's smart daughter came to the Simpson trial. She is Dr. Robin Cotton, head of the Cellmark Labs, where DNA samples in this case were tested. DNA is two strands wound together. She brought simple diagrams to this class, a cram course that is supposed to prepare the jury for an elementary examination on DNA. It shows there a series of gels and two power supplies up on... Eventually, the test results are going to have names, O.J. Simpson's and the two victims. The prosecution is expected to say that Simpson's blood is at the crime scene, the victim's blood is in his car, and in his house. Simpson's side knows this stuff is both incriminating and boring. His lawyers plan to attack the DNA results on the basis of sloppy collection techniques that invalidated the results. The prosecution is anticipating that assault already. So this process of degradation, can it change my DNA into looking like your DNA? No. The defense is also expected to continue its conspiracy theory that results which incriminate O.J. Simpson are part of a plot to frame him. Here in Sioux Falls, it's not often that you find a place that's unique to the entire country, but we've done just that. It's a furniture store located in the Western Mall called Amnica. They're selling furniture there that's really turning heads, and tonight Scott Bowden shows us the store and introduces us to the man who's giving Sioux Falls a little taste of Europe. I like to make a travel to the United States and see this country. Yeah, it's, it's like my dream before. Now it's my dream come true, right? Yeah. Meet Vol Meshchikov. 
He's a Russian immigrant from a small republic called Estonia. He moved to Sioux Falls three years ago, and for the most part, he says he likes it here. The town is clean, the people are friendly, and he says everyone's eager to help him out whenever he needs it. In Sioux Falls, people, uh, people, sh people show me this place, what I'm looking for. Maybe they, they're very busy, and people drive with me and show me a place what I need. You know. Well, now Vo wants to give something back to the community. So he opened this furniture shop in the Western Mall called Emnika, and he's selling furniture that's turning people's heads. Some people just stop, like push the brake, push brake car, just stop and look around. Oh, uh -huh. I don't see this place before. And uh, something different, a lot of co lo lots of uh, colors furniture. Uh, some people ask me, this is real leather? I says, yes, it's real leather furniture. Oh, okay. And some people sit, sit down and tell me, I don't understand why it's so comfortable. You know? It's comfortable, but have you ever heard of a president, a Nicole, or even a Yufa? Probably not. It's because these Finland designs are the only ones sold in America, but they'll cost you a pretty penny, some up to $3,600. But Vol's confidence these designs will sell. This is furniture, furniture it's very light. I think kids can move this furniture very easy. And it's a high, it's good quality wood, good quality leather. And um, I tell you again, it's, I think it's good design. <laughs> okay. yeah. So whether you come to Amnika to look at the president, the Nicole, or just to check out the Yufa, Vol's hoping that he brings a taste to Europe right here to Sioux Falls. In Sioux Falls, Scapo News 5. Well, we may have some rock and roll in the skies overnight, eh? Yeah, this just in, a tornado on the ground just south of Omaha, about 24 miles. Mm. So severe weather this late at night. We have more rain to talk about in South Dakota, but there could be some severe weather. We'll explain it all after this. What makes a car dealer different? Not seeing the results of Ford Motor Company's QCP sir. East of Brookings, again, March 2nd, 1995, taken by Chris Johnson, she is, he, or she is an SDSU student, and this was taken and sent to me, one of Cook's weather picks. Current conditions in Sioux Falls, cloudy skies, 56 degrees, 55 is our dew point, east winds at 16, and our pressure is now on the rise at 29.56. Before we get to the severe weather, let's talk a little bit about some rainfall totals. 2.6 inches just as the last hour in a 24-hour span in Aberdeen. There is an urban and small stream advisory for all of Aberdeen and the surrounding towns, so... If there are areas where roads are covered by water, please do not try to cross them as your car can be swept away very quickly and sewers are backing up all around Aberdeen and surrounding communities. Pier, 0.91 inches so far today in 24 hours. And down to Sioux Falls, about a third of an inch. And Hill City in the western half of the state, 3.06 inches of rain. We've had enough. South Dakota is fast becoming the land of 5,000 extra large ponds. 56 in Sioux Falls, 53 in Brookings, 50 in Watertown, 58 in Grant call Harold's Travel now to make your reservations. The Harold's Travel toll-free number is 1-800-605-TRIP. That's Harold's Travel, 1-800-605-TRIP. Call Harold's Travel now. Depending on our weather, Sioux Falls will be the site for two North Central Conference tournaments this week. Beginning on Thursday at Rock and Field, Augustana will host the NCC Men's Baseball Tournament. Here's a quick look at first round pairings with Augie opening up against Northern Colorado Thursday afternoon at 4. The double elimination tournament runs through Sunday. Band beginning on Friday at Bowden Field right next door, the NCC Regional Softball Tournament with Augustana, the number one seed, and the tourney hosts. Augie finished second to Nebraska Omaha over the weekend in the NCC Championship in St. Cloud. With showers and thunderstorms predicted in Chicago tonight, that's exactly what the Minnesota Twins could use after their 17th inning marathon in Cleveland yesterday. Young Pat Mahomes back on the mound for the Twins after lasting just five innings in his two previous starts combined. He takes to the mound tonight wondering, how do you win in the majors? And it's not like Frank Thomas is going to show him how. He says welcome to Chicago with a two-run shot to dead center field. Twins down 2 nothing in the first. Still in the first, Mahomes serving up batting practice. It's Warren Newsom with a solo shot. 3-0 pale hose after one. The Twins do score a run in the second and one more in the third. 
but lose again tonight from the long ball. Four to two to, th to Chicago. They face each other tomorrow once again. A quick check on the American League scoreboard. Cleveland blanks or shuts out the Kansas City Twins six to two, and Texas leading Oakland. That one just underway. In Atlanta tonight, Coach Bobby Cox back in the dugout less than. 24 hours after being arrested for a domestic dispute with his wife last night. Tom Glavin on the mound for the Braves, serving up the long ball. Greg Jeffries, a two-run shot to begin the game down in Atlanta. Atlanta down two to nothing after one. In the second, the Phils will score again on Lenny Dykstra's single to right field. 3-0 Phillies, Atlanta scores twice, but it's not enough as Philadelphia wins their fifth in a row, 3-2 over Atlanta. Here's a check on the senior circuit scoreboard. 6-3, Houston beats Pittsburgh, Montreal over Florida this, this, or tonight. Chicago beating St. Louis in the seventh and just underway L.A. and San Diego. The NBA playoffs have moved into the second round with the young Lakers visiting San Antonio tonight and trail one game to none in that series. And we check out game two in the opening half. Eddie Jones not intimidated by the Admiral in the paint at all. He gets the slam and the Lakers still trailed by five early. This one was back and forth all night long. The Lakers on the fast break and David Robinson rejects Anthony Peeler's shot. Then it's Robinson. On the fast break, Sean Elliott ends it up with the two-hand slam. Spurs up by 13 in the second. This one would go into overtime with the Spurs winning in overtime, 97-90. to 90. Dennis Rodman, 22 points and 22 rebounds for the Spurs, who now lead that series two games to none. The quest for the Stanley Cup continued tonight, where it's playoff time in the NHL. In Philadelphia, the Flyers hosting Buffalo. Where in game one, Philadelphia won in overtime without their star center, Eric Lindros. And Eric Lindros would be on the sidelines tonight. In the first period, Rod Brendamore takes the bounce off a saber skate, and it's his first goal of the playoffs. 1 0, Philadelphia. And there's Eric sitting in the stands. As in the second, it's Brendamore again on the break. He finds Rob Demio for the one timer. The play, or the Flyers up 3 0 and go on to beat Buffalo 3 1 and take a 2 0 lead in that series. Flyers goalie Ron Hextall had 29 saves to spark the Flyers' defense. Here's a check on the rest of the games in the NHL tonight. Pittsburgh beats Washington 5-3. New York over Quebec, big to tie that series at one apiece. And one other game on the ice tonight. If we can check that score out. Nope, I guess we won't. We'll head back. The Minnesota Vikings are tightening their wallets this spring. In a move to save money, the Vikes released running back Terry Allen today. Allen returned back from knee surgery last year to rush for more than... A thousand yards to lead Minnesota, but according to the Vikings, his production dropped off somewhat in the second half of the season, and his $1.5 million salary made him too expensive to keep. And a quick check, wet round, a high school golf tournament this afternoon, third round of the city tournament, O'Gorman with a big lead, medalist Ashley Evans from OG, 44. That fourth and final round is Wednesday at their Westward Ho, and hopefully it'll be a lot nicer than today on the links. Doesn't sound like it will, but no. we'll hope so. Thanks, John. In a moment, a happy ending to the story of a dog-napped Tetley. A chihuahua comes home after payment of ransom. Next on KDLD News. <laughs> Maker of the number one selling brand of chainsaw worldwide. Also makes a full line of trimmers with enough power to handle almost any size job. It could be one of the more useful tools you'll ever own. Available in steel territory, starting at $79.95. Mommies are delicate, mommies are dear. Mine cooks and cleans a lot, mine's always near. She's so sweet, she's tidy and kind. You don't have she the same old mom. She washes, she knits to unwind. We don't mommies. have the same old gifts. You'll find savings throughout the store at Dayton's Mother's Day sale, now through Sunday. Today in the public schools, Katie Dorme wrote her last name without any help. Jessica Enya spun through the air with the greatest of ease. And Andrew Lopez discovered how to make an airplane soar with the wind. For every child with dreams. For all parents with a dream for their children. The public schools are where small miracles happen every day. 
at Chevrolet's open house at your Heartland Chevy dealer, time to take a little spin. In Motor Trend Magazine's Truck of the Year, the 95 Chevy Blazer. Blazer comes standard with V6, automatic, airbag, four-wheel analog brakes, air conditioning, four-wheel drive, child security, 24-hour roadside assistance, and more. With all that going for it, Blazer's still over 3,000 less than Explorer. The one that isn't Truck of the Year. The award. The winner. Blazer at your Heartland Chevy dealer. Finally tonight, we have the Dog Gonda story out of New York. A tiny chihuahua is back home tonight after being dog-napped. Tetley was riding in a duffel bag her owners carry her around in when Saturday on the subway somebody snatched the satchel and took off. Glenn Edwards offered a $1,000 reward. No questions asked for Tetley's return. Well, today a woman in Harlem phoned to say she bought the dog for $20. She realized it was Tetley after seeing news reports. The woman called the Edwards family, got the reward, and returned Tetley. And he looks pretty happy tonight. <laughs> he looks happy to be <laughs> home, didn't he? Uh, we're looking for some tough weather out there. Yeah, earlier we just mentioned the fact that there was a tornado warning just south of Omaha. Now just coming in a small stream flood advisory for Aurora, Douglas, and Davison counties. Reports of up to three and a third inches of rain in just the last three hours. So please don't try to cross any roads in that area with dangerous flooding situation. Let's, let's pay attention. Stay alert. Definitely. That's it for now. We'll be back tomorrow, 5 and 10. Till then, have a good night. Jay Leno's next with The Tonight Show. Good night.